as we started off this morning, you know, Casey, something of active interest in the whole uh, community of ophthalmology and, and, and cornea. Lots of research being done, both on the bench and in the lab and uh, in the clinics. So you're going to see a lot more happening as the years go by, as I think we've seen each year with the program that we have here. So let's get back to cross-linking. What is the future of cross-linking? Now, I think in KC, we are aiming towards what we call photorefractive intrastromal cross-linking, which is a customized form of cross-linking to get you a better result. Now, standard cross-linking, the goal is to keep you stable, so the progressivity of keratoconus is diminished, and you can rest assured that you're not going to be getting worse and worse as, as the years go on. But standard cross-linking has some effect, but, but not too much effect on the corneal topography and on your vision. We saw we were getting a lot more effect with adjunctive procedures as such uh, as intacts. The thought was, if we modify the cross-linking procedure in a number of ways, could we get a more robust effect on the cornea to make it more uh, symmetric? Uh, first thing that was tried uh, was actually when I was in Istanbul some four years ago, uh, where we thought that perhaps by increasing the amount of cross-linking that you were going to get, we could flatten the cone uh, even even more. And that really didn't change things a lot. We got stability, but not really uh, more change in the corneal uh, topography. And the next thing uh, to be tried then was a mask that allowed the cross-linking to be delivered only over the weak part of the cornea. That is you know, essentially the redder part uh, of the cornea. We started to notice a little bit more change uh, when, when that was done. So le that led to the development, or sh I shall say the ongoing uh, development of a customized cross-linking uh, procedure. Uh, so this is a procedure where we can take your corneal maps, feed it into the cross-linking instrument, and then derive customized patterns depending on the shape of your cornea. So you can see here, no longer is it just a broad ultraviolet beam. Rather, these are now patterned and shaped for the cornea itself. So standard cross-linking procedure, and here, a topography-guided pixel procedure, where both the energy and the configuration of the cross-linking is adjusted for the location of your cone. And in very early trials overseas, we've seen some pretty good reactions, both with regard to maintaining corneal stability, but in particular, improving the symmetry of the cone, a la the types of results we might be getting with Intax and CK and topography, a guided laser. So this is something where you're going to see a lot more work over the next couple of years, really uh, across the globe, about two dozen patients have been treated with results that are very encouraging, but clearly a lot more needs to be worked out from the point of view of that type of, of technology. Uh, the next are the potential corneal inlays uh, for uh, keratoconus. The optical concern in KC, as we have reiterated from lecture to lecture today, is that the irregularity of the cornea leads to a lot of light scatter. So some light's focused here, some there, some there. That causes the general compromise of visual static, giving you a poor quality of vision. In this specific type of new device called the camera inlay, there is a small aperture within a lens that 
helps to expand the depth of your focus. So this is something that's implanted into the cornea, about as deep as the intacts go. Light rays simply focus through the little hole, and this increases your depth of focus. You might find yourselves in some circumstances when trying to read something, making a little hole with your fingers and noticing that it makes things clearer. Well, this is a full-time little pinhole uh, that you would look through. The principle of this is the same principle that cameras uh, use. In the old style camera where you used to do your own f-stop to get a more focus and a better depth of field, you would stop the camera down and shoot through a smaller aperture. That's because small aperture optics give you better focus. Well, similarly, we do the same thing with the camera inlay. This is placed within the cornea, blocks out the peripheral rays that are going through the cone, perhaps, that are out of focus, and we hope just leaves you with more focused rays. This is a procedure and device that was recently FDA approved for use in reading vision to try to expand the depth of focus so older people could start reading uh, better uh, without glasses. But it's something that may have a place in some cases of KC where we're trying to screen out the peripheral unfocused rays, particularly in patients who can't wear contact lenses uh, and need a better optics to give better focus and particularly to remove the static rays that are impinging upon their vision. Another procedure we've been working on is the microwave Keraflex a procedure. This is in early clinical trials. This is somewhat similar to the CK procedure in that it applies, rather than radio frequency energy, it applies microwave energy. The microwaves shrink the cornea around the cone and the goal there then is to flatten the cone, again make it less steep. This is a post-operative appearance of the annular ring. This is a patient being treated with crosslinking afterwards. You can see the little ring uh, in place. And again, this is the ring as seen three months later. Uh, this is uh, one of the patients that we have uh, treated. Uh, this is uh, a preoperative. Uh, you can see here uh, a corneal steepness about 62 or so. Postoperatively, you see a shrinkage of the cone with a large blue area, so a lot of flattening with a very a good visual acuity result patient uh, going from 2200 to 2025. We've also done investigations using hemi rings, not unlike uh, the intax procedure to treat low cones. And here you can see, again, in an early procedure, a lot of flattening and a lot of uh, regularity restored uh, to the, the cornea. And we currently have a clinical trial uh, that we're uh, doing in, in the microwave procedure for very selected uh, patients. And finally, for KC, our customized intracorneal inlays and corneal onlays. With the development of new kinds of lasers, we are able to prepare corneal tissue as obtained uh, from the eye bank, uh, as Dr. Constat discussed. And we're able to take this tissue now and model it using lasers to cut it to very meticulous specifications. And there is a potential of corneal tissue, small modeled portions of corneal tissue being used as a lens that we can either put into the cornea via a laser pocket. So this, what you're seeing here, is a little disc of corneal tissue that's being placed into the cornea, just like we did with that acufocus inlay. But in this case, 
with the goal to increase the thickness of the cornea, improve surface topography. And it may come uh, to bear in the future, as technology improves, that we could take possibly your corneal map, make tissue using lasers from donated corneas that we be specifically conformed to your cornea, in effect thickening the thin parts, flattening the steep parts, and making your cornea more regular and thicker uh, afterwards. Uh, we hope to start a clinical trial of, of, of early iterations of this, not in the uh, too long distant uh, future, and there are uh, technologies that are being tested now, uh, particularly in Europe, that might be able to fashion uh, these kinds uh, of inlays. So as I think we've seen all morning that we have seen in the past decades, and we're going to see uh, in the future, many new and novel approaches to diagnosis, treatment, ongoing management of keratoconus. So whereas in the old days, one, it was difficult to diagnose, it was typically diagnosed very late, contact lens technology was rudimentary, and many patients went directly to corneal transplant. What we're seeing today is an evolving array of treatments and, and technologies which give us as the doctors and, and you as, as patients many options that we can use to approach your case in particular to give you really the best outcome now and the best ongoing results as uh, time goes on. Keratoconus I think is something that today is very manageable. There are good techniques to keep you seeing well throughout the decades and decades of life. So I thank you for coming and I think we have a few minutes for questions if anybody uh, has any. If not, we'll see you all next year.